gentleman from Oklahoma, Mr. Lucas. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And it is always a challenge on the Republican side to follow Mr. Rubacher from California. But here we go. A number of my colleagues have touched on this question, uh, Acting Director, about the nature of the agency and the ability of the things to be done that are necessary in this environment we work in with an Acting Director. And you're a long-term career guy, and you've done an outstanding job and a very good role uh, as acting director. But ultimately, as my friends are noting here, in the environment we work in, the resources that the agency needs in the long term, having a director uh, nominated and confirmed by the United States Senate from the administration is critically important, and I think we would all agree on that. And while this body can't uh, really give advice to that other institution, I notice I was very careful in my phraseology there. Uh, nonetheless, having an, a full-time director is an critically important thing. And I spent five or six years sitting next to the OMB director on a subcommittee of another committee. And I understand how challenging uh, the circumstances can be there. So we need someone, and I agree with my colleagues. Another observation in general sense I would note, uh, my friend from Colorado's uh, focus on having people on Mars by 2033, that would make me 73 years old. I would like to be alive for this great accomplishment. And while I come from reasonably decent genetics, uh, once we get past the mid-80s, it starts to be a little questionable. So I want to help you get there and the agency get there. So for a comment or two in the weeds, now that we've discussed indirectly, Mr. Mulvaney, and the environment we're working in, uh, NASA's expressed an interest in building a second mobile launch platform for the SLS as a way to, take, uh, to address some of the scheduling pressure on the first crewed mission of SLS and Orion. And I was looking through your request and I noticed the second platform's not included. What effect would building a second mobile launch platform rather than modifying an existing platform have on the launch schedule for SLS and Orion? And what would the cost be? Thinking about our justifications to our other friends in government about why we need the resources to do things. Yeah, I think we, we took a hard look at that during this, during this cycle. And what, what, what the advantage of a second mobile launch platform gives you is I could fly on the mobile launch platform I'm building today, and I could potentially fly Orion if I bought another interim cryogenic propulsion stage, an upper stage. So I could fly quicker, fly humans quicker, probably 2022 time frame. The, the, the opposite of that is it costs. It's a pretty expensive proposition to build a new mo mobile launcher and to buy another inter interim cryogenic propulsion stage. And so just as a, we, we had the discussion, we had the debate, and our answer came back, we just should stick with our plan that we've got. So, I mean, that was the difference. We can provide you the numbers. Um, be glad to provide the, the costs associated with that to the I committee. would be fascinated by the numbers, okay. Director, because that's one of the issues that we as a committee need to take up in our work uh, with the appropriators. If we really want to get there in 2033 or a day or two earlier, providing those necessary resources. Now let's touch for a moment, uh, are the flat, uh, notional, nominal, top line, out year numbers on the budget request a result of the decision to keep funding flat, or are they simply placeholders for subsequent requests that the administration will be making as the long-term formula gets put together, as all the pieces come into place in the administration? Yeah, we believe that, that our job is to present the budget we need every year. To, to OMB, and so without yours being notional, I don't really think about them either way as placeholders or direction. I just think we have to present our budget going forward, so. Another observation that I would make to my colleagues on the committee, that it's our responsibility to address some of these long-term issues, our responsibility to focus the resources to do what uh, is in the common good and the best interest. Just one casual uh, question to conclude with, uh, Director. Tell us about the, the funding situations and circumstances of James Webb. James Webb. Are we still on track? We still have the resources necessary to help it live up to its potential? Yeah, we believe we have the resources necessary now. We're in a pretty significant review from a schedule standpoint about when we'll launch it. We're having some challenges with uh, a couple of the technical parts of the spacecraft, not the telescope part, but the actual spacecraft bus that's being built. The telescopes are delivered and it's ready to go. We've done through the, gone through the testing. Um, they're around the sun shield and around some of the propulsion elements associated with that. Um, so we, we, we're supposed, I'm supposed to get briefed by the end of the month on where we are, and we'll let, obviously let everybody know where we are from that standpoint. And I bring that up as important as the manned program is. Nonetheless, your satellites in orbit around the Earth have provided us with, as my mother would have said, a lot of Buck Rogers moments in the last 20 years. And we need to continue that 
focus and generating the imagination of our fellow citizens. With that, I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Lucas. And I'd like to recognize.